In the last video we set up some drag and drop functionality for our inventory widget and added the ability to close and reopen it by pressing I. However, currently there is nothing we can do with our items, so in this video we will expand our inventory functions. Before we do that, there is one issue I noticed. When you pick up an actor and try to go over where the pickup actor was before, your character will move around the inventory actor. So to fix that, close the playtest and in our level search for nav mesh. The nav mesh basically calculates where a character can go and where he can't go. So the problem with that is that it's set to under runtime, it's set to runtime generation static. So it will be calculated before the game starts where our character can go. So we want to set that to dynamic and now when you pick it up you can go over the spot where it was before. Alright, now to the inventory functions. Go to the inventory actor and add a function. The first one will be called remove item at index. It will have two inputs. First the index, which will be an integer, and the amount, which will also be an integer. And for the output, same as in our add item function, we will create a boolean here, call that one success. Question mark. So the first thing we will do is to promote our inputs here to local variables. For the first one call that local index. And also promote the amount to local amount. Connect the wires here. And then we want to perform a check, so branch. Now for the condition, we want to search for is empty slot at our local index. But we want our slot to not be empty, so search for not. And then you want to search for end because we also want to check for another condition, and that is that our local amount is greater than zero because otherwise we don't have to do anything. Connect the end to the condition of the branch. If it's false, you can go directly to the return node and leave success as false. But if it's true, we want to perform another branch. And this time we want to get our amount at index plug in the local index as well and we'll get our local amount and check whether it's greater or equal to the amount at our local index because if this is the case we can just clear out the slot and if it's not we want to change the amount at our slot so if our local amount is greater or equal to you want to grab in the slots array and set array element index will be our local amount, uh, our local index and split the item struct pin here and leave the class as null and item amount at zero. After we did that also update our slot so we see it in our widget index will be our local index again. After that you can return successful. For the false path, grab in the slots array again, set array element, index will be your local index as well, and split the item struct pin. Now we want to use the same class that is already on our slot, so get of the slots array, at our local index, break that, and let's make some space here. Connect the class to the item class and from the amount you want to subtract our local amount. Plug that in for the item amount. Update our slot again. Index will be our local index. And we also want to return set the success to true. Compile and save and that should be it for our remove item function. Now the next one will be swap slots. 
it will have two inputs as well. First one will be our first index, index one. The second one will be index two. And again, create an output boolean called success, question mark. Like we did before, make that local variables again, call it local index one, the second one local index two. And after that, we want to check whether this indexes one and two are within our slots array. So grab in the slots and search for last index. Then grab in the local index one, local index two. And first of the local index, search for greater than the last index. If that is the case, or our local index 2 is greater than the last index. So if one of it isn't in the range of our array, we want to return with false. But if they both are within the array, we want to grab in the slots array and get at the second index local index 2 and promote the result of that to a local variable called local slot 2. You will see in a second why we need that. After that grab in the slots array and set array element. For the index choose local index 2. And for the item, get the slots array, get from it at our first index, local index one, and choose that for the item. And that is the reason why we had to create this local slot two variable, because here we change our second index, and after that we have no ability to get what was there before. So after we did that, wrap in the slots array again. Now we want to set the first index and its item will be our stored local slot 2 variable. Also before we return we want to update both slots. So create an update function here, copy that and for the first one local index 1, for the second one local index 2 and now we can return successful. Also we want to have the ability to split stacks so create another function called split stack. It will have two inputs as well. First one will be the stack index. It's an integer. Next one will be the amount to split and an output call that success again question mark and it will be a boolean. Like we did before, create local variables. That will be our local stack index. And the amount will be local amount. Connect the execution wires here. And after that, create a branch. And we want to check whether our slot is empty. So the local stack index. If it is empty, go into the return node and return false. If it isn't, we want to go into another branch. And now we want to get item info at index. Index will be our local stack index. And break the item info here. Now the can be stacked. And we want to check that the amount at our index is greater than our local amount because otherwise we can't split. Connect that to the end and the end to the condition. If it's false, return false. If it isn't, we will search for an empty slot to split our stack to. After success, create another branch. 
If it's false, return false again. If it's true, we'll get the index we found and promote that to a local variable. Call it local found index. Set that here. And then grab in our slots array, set array element. Index will be our local stack index and split the item struct pin. The class should be the one that was on the slot before. So also get from the slots array at our local stack index and break the slot structure here. Connect the class and for the item amount, get our amount at the slot minus our local amount. Connect that here. And after that, get our slots array again, set array element. And now the local found index will be set. Split the item struct here. The class we will get from our class at the stack index before. And the amount will simply be our local amount. Connect those two. Also make sure that you update both of them. Update slot at index. Copy and paste that one. So first local stack index will be updated and after that our local found index. After that we return and this time we return successfully. Compile and save. So that's it for our inventory functions. We also need another event. So go to the event graph and right click to create a custom event, add custom event. Call that one use item add index. It will have an input, which will be the index. Type integer. First thing we'll have to do, get the slots, get from it, add our index and break the structure. Now the item class you will check for is valid. Essentially that is what our is slot empty function does, but later on we will need to reference to our item class so we can also use it like that. Then of the is valid, search for a branch, connect the execution wires from the custom event to the branch. If it is a valid class, then we want to grab our class and search for spawn actor from class. Connect the true to it. Split the spawn transform here and you can leave everything at zero is so it will be spawned at the origin of our map and for the collision handling override set it to always spawn ignore collisions. Then of the return value we want to call the function we created in our in the second video of this series which was called uh, event on use I think yes that's it. So that's it what our custom event here does. The problem with our item classes is that they have no reference to the inventory and the index they are at. So we'll change that now. Compile and save. Go, go close the inventory. And in our item classes, BP master item, create two new variables. First one will be inventory and make it a BP underscore inventory reference. Also make sure it's editable and exposed on spawn so we can define it when we use our uh, custom event in the inventory. Then create another variable that will be our index. Its type will be integer. Also editable and exposed on spawn. And if you want to, you can put them in a category, for example, on spawn, just to organize things. Drag the inventory in there as well. Now for a event on use, we want to print a string. So that's just for debugging and it's in our parent class. So we'll override this event in every other class, basically. For the in string, you can search for append. You see append string node here. Connect the return value and for a, you can type in you used and hit spacebar once. And for the B, drag in our item info, break that, and choose the name. 
Then after we printed the string, grab in the inventory and we will try to remove an item at index. The index will be our index and the amount will be one. So we'll try to remove ourselves. If we were successful, we can now destroy our item actor. Before we can actually test things, you want to compile, save and go back to the inventory. And here in the use item at index event, you want to path through the variables for the inventory, get a reference to self. And the index comes from the input of our custom event here. Now compile, save. And let's set up some debugging functionality in our top down BP. Go to top down BP, blueprints, top down character. And I know that in some of the last videos we created some debugging functionality up here. You can actually delete that one now. And right click here, press one. So when we hit one, grab in the inventory reference and we will try to use an item at index. Index will be zero, so we use our first item right click search for two when we press two grab off the inventory reference and we can swap our slots index one should be zero index two will be one so we swap our first and our second item in the inventory then for three we want to debug our split stacks function grab in the inventory and search for split stacks or split stack here Stack index will be zero. Amount can be something like 25. And right click once again, search for four. And when we press four, we want to remove item at index, index zero, and we will remove 50. Now compile and save, and we can test that. So let's pick up some health potions here. If we press one, there is you use health potion and we only have 49 left. If we hit two, it swaps with the second slot in our inventory. If we hit three, you can see that we have now 24 on one stack and 25 on another. Now we can hit two to swap between those two. And we can finally hit four to remove them at our index can press 2 again, hit 4 again and we removed everything. Alright, that's it for this video. In the next one we will probably create our action menus. So we have other ways to use our items or to split the stacks than by clicking 1, 2 or 3 on our keyboard. See you then!